Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about mixing different shaders. Now this can apply to all sorts of different combinations of shaders and potentially work for two or more. In this particular video, I'm going to focus on some very simple shaders and just two um, materials in particular so that I can show you the basic concept and how everything works. So just to cover a few basics first off, I'm using Blender 3.5, but this should work with all versions from three upwards. I haven't used the two versions, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled and I'm using the cycles render engine. I've already got my object in the scene here, as you can see, but there's no materials plugged into the material output. So currently it's solid black. There's nothing there. If I take the output from this principled shader and plug it into the surface, we should get, according to the base color, a white object, which we do. That's fine. Now, if I take this uh, shader and plug it into the surface, I get a red object as per the base color here. But here's the thing. There's only one surface input slot, but I want to combine these two and have one show through the other. Now I could just grab myself a mix shader by pressing shift A and searching for mix shader and then pop it in here so that I've now got two slots available. I'll put the red at the bottom and I'll put the white at the top. But the thing with this particular shader is we've got this factor here and we can slide that to the right to give us all of this, which is the bottom slot or zero all the way to the left which is the top slot, the white. And we get obviously all the colors in between or tones or shades, whatever you want to call them. But I don't want that. I want the red to show through holes in the white. Now to do that, we can use this factor input and take something like a noise texture through a color ramp to give us uh, a particular look, which is this. And I'm making sure it's quite sharp on the edges by bringing those sliders together. Let's see if we can get quite a big. Now, of course, you can use the constant if you want a definite line on the end. So we'll put constant. The scale, obviously, detail and all that do make changes to the overall pattern. But if I now take this, plug it into the factor and take the output from the mix shader and plug it into the surface, you can now see that I have the red material coming through the white material just where that shader or that combination of shader objects is uh, visible. So if I change the scale on that, it makes a difference. If I change the detail on that, it makes a difference. And if I change the roughness, that also makes a difference. And the distortion. So you can see there's lots of settings to play with and what we can also do is take this and plug it into the normal, grab ourselves a bump node, chuck it in there and make sure the height is connected. Just watch out for all things moving around. And we then get some bump around the edges, which is kind of cool. Not a huge amount of bump, but there you go. Um, anyway, so that's the basic principle of it. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got a whole swathe of nodes doing all sorts of calculations, plugging into this principled shader or this one. Basically, as long as you've got two principled shaders or uh, two, what are we doing? Shaders. Any two of these, you should be able to mix them through this mix shader and use the factor to control how much of each shows through. Now let's put this through here as well. So you can now see we've got a better edging around there where the red shows through. Um, yes, so as I was saying anyway, um, you can control uh, two. If you wanted to do three, then you can potentially duplicate this, chuck that in there, and then get yourself another one of these. 
pop that in that bottom slot. Let's change that color so we can see a difference. And then use a different input for the factor. So if we change that, you can see now there's a difference. So you can combine more than two into a single material. How cool is that? Anyway, I hope that's helped you briefly and, and basically to understand how the shaders mix together and can poke through each other. If you have any specific questions, um, then please do feel free to drop them in the comment section below the video on YouTube. And in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed and thanks to everyone that always already has that's made a big difference to this channel. And of course, give the video a thumbs up before you head off today. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.